Illinois. That's from director Dave to you, and they love. And welcome back to the channel, man. I haven't posted on this month for like three, four months. I got tired of dropping these videos, and I got tired of making reaction videos. But yeah, man, let me let's go ahead, man. You new to my channel? Man. Go on, go ahead, hit that sub button. Man. I'm gonna drop back. I'm gonna start by dropping back these cash or videos, shit, man. Let me just turn the volume up. Do remember to follow instructions, or you will burn the toast. Who was the creator of the Star Wars and Indiana Jones film franchises? George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese. Ew, a bit of a trick question right out of the gate. Ah, yeah. Now, these two guys, they are uh, they are best friends, and they planned Indiana Jones while building sandcastles on vacation with their families together, uh, despite being grown men. But the one who's involved in both franchises, that was Lucas. Jorge, that is. Yes, before the surprise success of Star Wars in 1977, Damn. and an equally surprising uh, ruining of the franchise later, years before wisely selling it to Disney. Sorry, but it's true. Yeah, Lucas had already been nominated for a number of Academy shit. Awards yeah, for his 1973 round. film, American Graffiti. Yeah, hey, like 24 people that? up in here. Do not play this shit. No oh, was it good? Was it good? Was it, or was people it good do not play this shit. No, whatsoever, no more. Okay. Uh, I just had to make up that conversation since no one answered me. Thanks, everybody, here at the studio for nothing. Question number two. Amsterdam is the capital city of what country? Austria, Czech Republic, the Netherlands. No, it's not a trick question. Go with your gut on this one. <laughs> Amsterdam, famous for its views on recreational drugs, a very funny-sounding language called Dutch, canals, beautiful houses, coffee shops, and red light district. It also is the capital city of the answer that we have coming to you. What? The Netherlands, that is. Now, although it's not the location of the government of the Netherlands, a lot of countries and places do that. New York, not the capital of New York, uh, which is in The Hague, the city's name is derived from its origin as a dam on the river Amstel. Amstel, dam, Amsterdam, see how that worked? This was uh, originally a fishing village, which was established in the century CE. Oh, those Dutch. They're so funny. Let's all take a moment to appreciate the Dutch. <laughs> Your language is funny. Question number three. Who is the author of the book series featuring Daenerys Targaryen, <laughs> Daenerys Targaryen and Jon Snow? C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, George R.R. R. Martin. I swear I'm up to speed on this show, guys. I have watched all the episodes. It just happens sometimes in a live show. Now, speaking of, in the words of that wine-guzzling queen of sass, Cersei Lannister, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. That's how she speaks, grinding her teeth like that. All right, the answer, George R.R. R. Martin. Apparently, you have to have initials in your name to have a hit series made into movies. But A Song of Ice and Fire, this is known around the world as the TV adaptation, as you guys know, Game of Thrones. And since the first book in the series was released in the U.S. back in 1996, the stories have been translated into more to 30, three zero, count them, different languages. Um, one of them was not Klingon. It wasn't Klingon, was it? No, it wasn't. Or it was. Okay. Again, I made up that conversation because no one here answered me at the studio. Question four. Which kind of animal eats both meat and vegetable food? Omnivore, frugivore, carnivore. <gasps> what? Both kinds? How could you? Beamer78, welcome to the cash show. Beamer78 says, first time here. And then Lulu8601 says, missed the glasses. I knew I was forgetting something today. Oh, yeah, put in my contacts because I'm traveling today and I just... I don't know why. Omnivore is the answer. Why is it the answer? Well, it's derived from the Latin words omnis, meaning all, of course, and then vorare, meaning to eat. Various mammals are omnivores in the wild, such as species of pigs, badgers, bears, <laughs> badgers, bears, codis, whatever those are, civets, hedgehogs, opossums, skunks, sloths, squirrels, raccoons, chipmunk, mice, and rats. And I think that's almost all of them. Of course, human beings, those are omnivores too because we have canines, guys. Get over it. Question number five. Hope that you're staying alive, because I know I'm feeling it today. You guys must be feeling it, too. Which 1987 movie contained the line, greed, for lack of a better word, is good? Wall Street, other people's money, rogue trader. 
People often misquote this as greed is good. No, that's not what was said. Hey. Just like how there's no crying in baseball or oh, making man. people offers they can't refuse, American cinema, if nothing else, has provided us limitless quotable lines packed with life advice and creeds to live by. This quote comes from Wall Street. Michael Douglas's Ooh. character Gordon Gecko has become a symbol of popular culture for unrestrained 1980s greed. And uh, that, that actually came after Reagan's trickle-down uh, economics, Reaganomics, which, uh, uh, well, it would have worked, but as he says in the movie, greed is good. And that's what happened. All right. Hey, do you have a friend to your left? Why don't you turn to that person? Boom. Give him a high five because you stayed alive. Oh, you want a high five too? I'm going to just make up this high five since nobody at the studio is going to do it. Boom. All right. Because it's time for our prize question. Moving along. All right. Question number six is worth $150. Question six is in archery. What is the name of the aerodynamic and stabilizing fins at the end of the arrow? Keel, Fletching, Flanders, Randman 1979. I think I've seen you before. Hey, Bo, wear a bridge and go as Bo Bridges. That's clever. That's clever. But that's going to date us, buddy. All right? That's going to date us. Stupid Flanders. Which is not the answer. Fletching is the answer. The common English surname Fletcher, this is fun, is derived from the professional, the profession of the Fletcher, who used to specialize in making fletchings for arrows. Just like how the name Baker comes from the person that makes shoes, I think. It's probably shoes. Question number seven. This is the one who's worth 150 again. Ooh, it's a Shakespeare question. Get ready. Shakespeare's Othello chiefly takes place in which Italian city? Mantua, Verona, Venice. Now, the titular character is described as a Moor, which Europeans of the Middle Ages and the early modern period variously applied to Arabs, North African Berbers, and Muslim Europeans. The answer we're looking for is Venice. A lot of stories took place then for Shakespeare time. Its full title is The Tragedy of Othello, the Moor of Venice. But if I said that in the question, I would have given away the answer. The story revolves around its two central characters, Othello, of course, the Moorish general in the Venetian army, and his unfaithful and scheming junior officer, Iago. Ah, Iago. I knew it was you. All right, question number eight comes to us. Another $150 for the 5,402 survivors. Playing the cash show and stay with us. We are going to have lucky spin at the end of the game. Okay, question eight is, which U.S. president worked as a mining engineer in Australia as a young man? John F. Kennedy, Herbert Hoover, Theodore Roosevelt. I'll go with B because I don't know the answer. Fun fact, if you Google this answer, and you probably just did, if you got this one right immediately, it gives you the answer right away. I don't condone it, but possibly you could do that. Now, after graduation, our answer worked in the gold mining districts of Nevada City and Grass Valley County, for California, before going to Western Australia in 1897 as an employee of Bewick Maureen and Company. Our answer, Herbert Hoover. Hey, yes, right. now... The backstories of presidents, this is as diverse as the men who have held the office. Kennedy joined the U.S. Naval Reserve after college, and Teddy Roosevelt, he spent time as a cowboy in North Dakota. Like, for real. A real cowboy. You should look him up. Oh, he, there's interesting history of that, too. All right, question number nine. Uh, we've got $300 for this question. 4377 still in it to win it. Question nine. In 1993, Eritrea officially became independent from which country? Ethiopia, Egypt, Equatorial Guinea. Mike's wife, 2002, says, Kankakee, Illinois. That's all? All right, quick. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's K I, I'm not wearing my glasses today. These contacts aren't the best. My bad. Cake key? I've never heard of it. Ethiopia I've heard of, though, and that's our answer. All right, and I have heard of Eritrea. Actually, fun fact, I learned about Eritrea from working on the cash show. Why Eritrea? Well, it's derived from the ancient Greek name for the Red Sea. So if you've never heard of this country, it could be because it's controlled by a unitary one-party presidential republic under a totalitarian dictatorship. So not a lot of news gets out from there. 
That's fine. We can say whatever we want. We know they're not listening. All right, question number 10. Question number 10. Well, uh, this is worth another $300. Question 10, another video game question. What video game was created and designed by Marcus Person? Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, Tetris. Tetris. Now, there are oh, few people in the video game industry that are well enough known to qualify for a trivia question, like yesterday's creator of Mario for sure, Shigeru Miyamoto. Dude's awesome. Now, the dude who made Fallout and Skyrim, that's Tom Howard, and then our boy, Marcus Person, he created a little game known as Minecraft. Yes, yes, only, wow, very few of you missed that one. Well done. Now, did you know, by early 2018, over 144 million copies have been sold across all platforms, making it the second best-selling video game of all time behind, ah, tune in tomorrow. You'll learn what that answer is tomorrow, all right? I'm just kidding, it was Tetris. We don't have that question, Mom. All right. All right, moving on to question number 11. The money kicks up a little bit here. Worth $450 divided by you that get it right. Question 11 is, what language is natively spoken by the majority of people in Zimbabwe? Tagalog, Farsi, Shona. Boy, I do not know nothing about that. I'm pretty sure that now, nobody else knows. Along with the English, our answer is an official language of Zimbabwe. This language is a member of the larger family of Bantu languages. There are over 15 million native speakers of the language if you include all five largest dialects. The answer, of course, Shona. Tagalog, that's a standardized form officially named Filipino. That's the national language of the Philippines. Farsi is also known as Persian. It's primarily spoken in Iran, Afghanistan, and thereabouts, but you guys probably already knew that. What else I know? That's it. You are through. Now on to the 3,067 of you, on to our last and final round. Tabby Cat 20 says, the song mm. The City of New Orleans mentions can oh, I yeah. still have, I'm sorry. What? What did I say? can kiki can it's can kiki forget it. All right, well, we've got question number 12 ready for you all. If you you might be a first-time winner today, we've got a lot of people in the runnings. 3,067, who's going to make it all the way through question 12? Who made the Savoy it? style of operas popular? Gilbert and Sullivan, okay. Mozart, you still in the game? Savoy opera, I you was grand the party comic now. opera that thrived in Victorian England in the late 19th century, Named from their yeah, regular like performances at London's Savoy yeah, Theatre, which was very much the creation of the famous that. duo oh, yeah, sure, Bach well. and Mozart. Those guys loved each other. Yeah. That's our. Oh no, sorry, it's Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, yeah. Gilbert and Sullivan! Oh boy, a Savoy opera, said probably no one ever. <laughs> Fun fact their partnership of Gilbert and Sullivan, they.